One of the most iconic games is Halo Combat Evolved, a first person shooter made in 2001 and developed by Bungie for the original Xbox console. The game was a success, often being called one of the greatest video games ever made, but what makes it so special? The game opens with a view of Alpha Halo, an ancient ring world that is worshipped by the Covenant. We then get our first look at the Pillar of Autumn, a massive cruiser ship made by the UNSC, ascending towards the ring. After that, through some dialogue between Keys and Cortana, we are told that the UNSC are still being tracked by the Covenant from Reach. Atmosphere is a very important thing for Halo, which is why the soundtrack is supposed to show the desperation of the UNSC. After a motivational message from Sergeant Johnson, Once again, it is our job to finish what the Flyboys started. We are leaving this ship platoon and engaging the Covenant on solid ground. When we meet the enemy, we will rip their skulls from their spines and toss them away laughing! Am I right, Marines? Sir, yes, sir! Mm hmm damn right I am. Now move it out! Double time! The Master Chief is awoken. Bringing low-level systems online. Cracking the case in 30 seconds. Here, we're put into the eyes of the big green man. He's hot! Blowing the pins in five! We then see a dude explode, uh, and then we're forced to jump over these pipes and then uh, crouch under this door. This level is basically a tutorial level, but it's actually fun. Not that many games that I've played have actually been able to achieve this. We are told by a marine that we are needed by Captain Keys, who then leads us to the bridge. We are told that the Autumn needs to be abandoned, and it will be landed on Halo. We are given our first mission, get Cortana off the ship. Keys gives us his magnum which we use to put lead into these grunts heads. You make your way through waves of covenant, finding secrets along the way. Finally, you get to the live pod that gets you off the invaded ship. We're gonna make it aren't we sir? I don't wanna die out here! There's nothing we can how, do. How very unfortunate. After landing on this alien ring, we are met by the beautiful scenery. This view alone is enough to make someone cry. Chief finds out that Johnson's platoon is held up at a strange foreigner structure, which we are forced to defend until evac arrives. It's a mess, sir. We're scattered all over this valley. We called for evac, but until you showed up, I thought we were cooked. <laughs> After doing so again and again and again, you save the marines and drive into a cave when Cortana says, This cave is not a natural formation. Someone built it. Chief drives into the dimly lit halls filled with fog. The player can really feel the eeriness of the structure and the ring as a whole. This kind of environmental atmosphere is a very common thing in the game. It's very subtle, but it helps tell the story a little bit more. Chief activates a light bridge, which allows him to proceed through the cave and search for other remaining life pods. In this part of the mission, the player has to find three squads of marines and help them to safety. The order in which you do this is up to you, making everyone's experience different. The locations that you find these marines are distributed in different sections of the hills. There is one on the cliffside, one with a massive forerunner structure, and one in the hills. Which if you were a normal human being, you would try and cram the warthog through the boulders. When you complete the mission, Cortana tells you she has located Captain Keys, being held on the truth and reconciliation a Covenant cruiser. And then, 
you fly away to the next level. Master Chief arrives at the Desert Plateau with a sniper rifle. This level introduces us to night vision, shade turrets, active camo, and a certain enemy we will talk about later. The player clears a section of Covenant before continuing. It's no surprise that Halo has good music, but it's the way that it's used that makes it better. In this case, this relaxing groove is appropriate for its setting. Combat doesn't need to be full of adrenaline filled chaos. It's unnecessary and can sometimes get boring. Halo is different. Bungie recognises what makes a game fun, and the soundtrack helps set the mood for what the player is experiencing. Chief and his marines locate the grav lift that allows you to get into the ship. This is made easier with the active camo that is conveniently placed next to the entrance to the next area. Also allowing a stealth style section to be possible. Chief silently takes down his enemies and the stationary guns that have been placed around the map. After doing so, the Covenant attempt to stop us from trespassing into the ship. This is where we meet a new opponent, Hunters. Now, playing this game as an innocent four-year-old, Hunters always scared the crap out of me. Something about the eerie music that was played in their presence, and the deep groans they occasionally made, always made me shake in my boots when I was faced with them. I always had to get my dad to kill them for me, and it's worse that they come in pairs. After eliminating the Hunters, we then rise into the cruiser. We find out that it's empty. No Covenant waiting on the other end. No Covenant defenses detected. What? There's no Covenant here. Think maybe nobody's home. Contact! Okay, contact! maybe a few Covenant. No Covenant. You had to open your mouth. You fight your way through a few waves of Covenant and then open this door for the Marines to get through. Your main mission now, locate Captain Keys and rescue him. Eventually, you do locate him being held in a cell. Upon releasing him, he reveals that he overheard the guards talking about the Halo, and that they believe it's some kind of weapon. Cortana then tells us that the Covenant are looking for Halo's control room, so we try and beat them to it. This is where we are met with our next mission, Silent Cartographer. We are put onto an island with our main mission being, find Halo's control room. And to do that, we need to find a Silent Cartographer, a map room that will lead us there. After a few enemies and a bit of driving around, we eventually do so, with it being guarded. And they lock the doors impeding our progress. So what do we do? we shut down the security systems. While making your way to the facility, you may come across some overshields placed nicely outside the entrance. But with all nice things come some very bad things. Again, we come across some more hunters, but this time it's scarier. A dark room with an unsettling ambience makes this fight 10 times worse. They are easy to kill, but as a kid, I was too scared to think about that. But you defeat them both and make your way down to shut off the security systems. The door opens and you make your way back to it. Good. That should open the door that leads into the main shaft. And if you're like me, you would loot this crashed pelican, getting a rocket launcher and a new warthog. Now you're back to finding the map room. You find rooms full of enemies, even more hunters, but you complete your mission, allowing Foehammer to lower you into the next level. 
I just want to quickly say, this level is amazing. It was even used for the demo level. So, you beat the Halo demo. Not bad, soldier, not bad at all. I would definitely recommend playing this level and just appreciating it, because it has some amazing scenery. Continuing from the last objective, Chief's mission now is to find Halo's control room and hopefully use it against the Covenant. This is where Foe Hammer lows us down into this new Forerunner maze thing. Here, as always, we mow down waves of Covenant in some interestingly shaped rooms. I don't know why someone would decide to build a structure like this. I'm sure someone must have had the blueprint upside down. It's either that or they were drunk out of their mind. But anyway, anyway. The weather patterns here seem natural, not artificial. I wonder if the ring's environment systems are malfunctioning. Or if the designers wanted the installation to have inclement weather. Yes, you are seeing this correctly. This level introduces us to sleepy grunts. This is Fire Team Zulu request. And we got this guy. Skill issue. Anyways, we take an elevator down to the next room. Something about gracefully taking the life of these alien specimens whilst the groovy song is playing deeply satisfies me. It's as if something is scratching an itch deep inside my brain. I don't know, I just like it. This part of the level makes us choose between these two weapons, the sniper and the rocket launcher. Unless you are mentally ill and you pick up both of them. If you choose the rocket launcher, you will find it easy to exterminate any enemy vehicles and enemy clusters. But with very limited ammo, I cannot recommend this to anyone as you run out of rockets faster than any other type of ammunition. However, if you choose the sniper, you will find it more rewarding in the long term as it's easier to eliminate any Covenant elites and you find more of its own ammo, which to me is a win-win. This next section of the level gives us access to the tank which you can control both the main gun and the turret. This now becomes your tool to assist you on finding the control room. Then you push through some ghosts and shade turrets until you come across this bridge room. If for some reason you decide to make a right turn, you will be rewarded with health and ammo. I wasn't forced to come here, yet I was rewarded. Halo has many moments like this that encourage the player to explore their surroundings, and I appreciate that. Anyway, after moving over the bridge and through some more Covenant, we make our way down to this strange cave thingy. You can't see me! Making our way through the hallways, we find another bunch of rooms that Chief needs to proceed through. They're pretty much identical to the previous ones, but with very minor changes.
This next part is interesting. Its ambience and music creates a sense of mystery towards these elites. The active camo that was secretly placed gets its use here. Two hunters waiting for an opponent are quickly taken down with just one bullet. <laughs> the room connects to a stone bridge with banshees placed strategically in the middle with two elites on standby. If you're lucky, you can take them both out quick enough before they steal your ride. If successful, you can make your way down to the destination, the control room. Covenant burst out. Your only way in is to fight. Forces in the vicinity have been eliminated. Let's move on to Halo's control center. This is it, Halo's control center. Chief walks slowly into this room. You can really feel the unnerving ambience of the Forerunner structures just from this cutscene alone. And this is when Cortana tells us really what the hell is going on. That terminal, try there. Never been better. You can't imagine the wealth of information. The knowledge, so much, so fast. It's glorious. So, what sort of weapon is it? What are you talking about? Let's stay focused. Halo, how do we use it against the Covenant? This ring isn't a cudgel, you barbarian. It's something else. Something much more important. The Covenant were right. This ring, it's Forerunner. Give me a second to access it. Yes, the Forerunner built this place, what they called a fortress world, in order to... Wait. No, that can't be. Oh, those Covenant fools. They must have known. There must have been signs. Slow down. You're losing me. The Covenant found something, buried in this ring, something horrible, and now they're afraid. Something buried? Where? The Captain. We've got to stop the Captain. Keys? What the weapons we... cache he's looking for. It's not really... We can't let him get inside. I don't understand. There's no time. Get out of here, find keys, stop him. Before it's too late! For no apparent reason, Cortana tells us to stop Captain Keys. Urgently. The Covenant fears something, that's for sure. But what is it? Well, this level highly focuses on environmental storytelling, the way of telling a story by using a player's surroundings and environment. The Covenant can be seen fleeing something, most likely what they discovered in this ring. The last transmission from the captain's dropship was from this area. That was over 12 hours ago. When you locate Captain Keys, radio in, and I'll come pick you up. Fohammer lowers us down next to a mysteriously crushed pelican, 
Presumably Keezers. Only a few steps down is another aircraft, this time Covenant. Something's going on here. After venturing down further, the player can catch a glimpse of what looks like a silhouette of a Covenant Elite. Except it's different, but you can't quite put your finger on what it is. The first sign of relief is through this tunnel. It looks as if allied forces are firing back at the Covenant, but when you go in the tunnel, nobody is to be seen, and the elevator, well, elevates. Chief goes down, only to find Covenant? Were they the ones firing the weapons, or was it something else? More of them are inside, so you take them out and proceed. The next room is dripping in this green, sloppy ooze. And the next hallway is smeared with blue, bloody alien corpses. After fighting through no enemies, we are met with a marine, but something is off. He starts firing his magnum at you. Stay back! Stay back! You're not turning me into one of those things! I'll blow your brains out! Get away from me! Ah! Ah! Don't touch me, you freaks! I won't be like you! I'll die first! Find your own hiding place! The monsters are everywhere! Play dead! That's what I did! Play dead! They took the live ones! Oh god, I can still hear them! Monsters! Ah! 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 Just leave me alone! He is severely traumatized and reveals a slight backstory to why he's acting like this. But as useful as this might be, the whole story is revealed in this next room. Chief finds an unlocked door. Upon opening, he finds a rather unpleasant surprise. He backs up, finding the helmet of Jenkins, a marine that was caught up in this mysterious event. The truth is told on the recordings. Johnson and his platoon land at the structure and head inside, only to find the mutilated remains of the Covenant. But how did they die? Something scrambled the insides. What's that? Plasma scoring? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there was an accident, you know, friendly fire or something? What caused this death to happen? Real pretty. Friend of yours? Now we just met. This is where they enter the room that Chief found. And here, the secrets are told. What's going on, soldier? He's got contact! Slap them! But they're not coming in! They're, they're just staring through us! What the slow no! Corporal! Do you copy? Over! I don't have time for your lip, soldier! I gave you an Sarge, order! Sarge! Listen! What is that? Where's that coming from, Everywhere. Mendoza? I don't... There! Mira! This is where we meet the Flood. Hold still! Hold still! Let them have it! Ah! The Marines desperately try and fight off the Parasite, but it's no use. They don't know it yet, but they're already dead. Rooms of this creature are bursting open, trying to infect Chief. As mentioned previously, the environmental storytelling of this level really sets the ambience. The last door bursts open, but something isn't right. There are other ones, ones more powerful and can revive if hosted by an infection form. This gives a new challenge to the combat. You always have to check if they're actually dead. You desperately attempt to escape, but you witness the Covenant being hunted by the Parasite. You fight through waves of flood, and you find a new weapon, the shotgun. Now, if I said this weapon was close range, I would be lying. This gun has a surprising effective range and can hold up the damage pretty well. This weapon is more effective against the flood than any other hostile. At the end of this level, we meet up with Johnson and some allies. Our current mission is to evacuate the survivors. Sir, 
Thank God you're here. We've been lost out here for hours. After we lost contact with the rest of the mission, we, we headed for the RV point, and then these 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 things that they ambushed us. We've got to get out of here. However, doing so, we meet our little robot friend, 343 Guilty Spark. His job is the caretaker of the ring, meaning he wants the flood to be obliterated as much as we do. So how do we stop it? Spark teleports us to the library, where he explains that it contains the index, basically the key to activate Halo and use it against the flood. Chief makes his way through the layers of the library, collecting the index and bringing it to the control center. Spark teleports Master Chief to the control center, where he attempts to activate the halo. But something stops him. It's Cortana. Fuck. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, really? She reveals that activating Halo doesn't just destroy Halo and the Flood, but the entire galaxy goes along with it. You have no idea how this ring works, do you? Why the Forerunners built it? Halo doesn't kill Flood. It kills their food. Humans, Covenant, whatever. We're all equally edible. The only way to stop the Flood is to starve them to death. And that's exactly what Halo is designed to do. Wipe the galaxy clean of all sentient life. You don't believe me? Ask him. Is it true? More or less. Obviously, we don't go along with this, and that makes Spark very angry. He summons an army of sentinels to attempt to take us down, but Chief fights back. Sentinels aren't a new enemy. We first see them at the end of 343 Guilty Spark and the whole of the library. This is the first level that they become hostile. Sentinels are weakened by plasma weapons and are instantly took down with a single charged plasma pistol shot. We begin to make our way out the control room. Cortana informs us that she can destroy the ring easily with the detonation of a starship fusion reactor. So, she searches for the crash site of the Pillar of Autumn. Also, whilst Cortana does that, we try and shut down the pulse generators scattered around to give us some time. Chief finds his way down the pyramid structure, filled with hostile forces. When you eliminate them all, you find this conveniently placed rocket launcher which we use to... Eat shit and die. Which we use to take out this wraith and commandeer a banshee where we make our way to the first pulse generator. That's the pulse generator. The center core is the signal amplifier. That's what we need to shut down. We need to interrupt the pulse generator's energy stream. I've adjusted your shield system so that it will deliver an EMP burst to disrupt the generator, that you'll need to walk into the beam to trigger it. The EMP blast should neutralize the generator, but it will also drain your shields and leave you vulnerable until they recharge. After doing so, we find a second generator, this time being guarded by Covenant and Flood. Right, I'll tell you what, you fat little cunt. <laughs> Make your way to the Banshee and fly to the ledge. Here is the second generator. This time, the room is full of flood, which is quite the challenge. Once overloaded, go to the tunnel that leads to the bridge. Then, clear the area and proceed to the next generator. This next area is made easier if it's skipped, obviously. This means you go straight to the Banshee and straight to the next room, and the mission is complete. Let's find a ride and get to the captain. No, that'll take too long. 
You have a better idea? There's a teleportation grid that runs throughout Halo. That's how the monitor moves about so quickly. I learned how to tap into the grid when I was in the control center. Unfortunately, each jump requires a rather consequential expenditure of energy. Something tells me I'm not gonna like this. But I'm pretty sure I can pull it from your suit without permanently damaging the suits. Needless to say, I think we should only try this once. Do it. The objective in the level keys is to locate Captain Keys to help detonate the fusion reactor. He's on the cruiser which we are teleported to at the start of the mission. Oh, oh I see. The coordinate data needs to be... Right. Captain? Captain? I've lost him. With the structure of this ship being identical to the Truth and Reconciliation, it makes it easy to navigate. Our path is being obstructed by a hole in a ship. Our only choice now is to go down and find another way around it, which is exactly what we do. The floor below is scattered in all kinds of enemies, giving the player a challenge when trying to navigate in the dark areas. We finally meet the gravity lift and get aboard. Look in the corners. The flood are gathering bodies here. We can see that the flood are piling bodies to add to the proto grave mine. This is a small detail, but also a pretty neat one. <laughs> He's delirious. In pain, we have to find him. The captain doesn't want us to find him. Maybe he's warning us about something. Here, we find out. The traumatizing groans and gasps make it seem like he's trying to escape. But it's too late. He's fully consumed by the flood. No human life signs detected. The captain, he's one of them. We can't let the flood get off this ring. You know what he'd expect. What he'd want us to do. It's done. I have the code. We should go. Chief retrieves his neural implant and flees the ship. Hold. We're not gonna make it. We'll make it. Pull up! Pull up! You did that on purpose, didn't you? The end starts with the beginning. Your last objective 
is to locate the bridge and start a remote detonation timer, which should destroy the ring and all life forms on it. You maneuver through familiar rooms and halls, fighting unfamiliar enemies, until you find the bridge and start the timer. I leave home for a few days and look what happens. This won't take long. There. That should give us enough time to make it to a lifeboat and put some distance between ourselves and Halo before the detonation. I'm afraid that's out of the question, really. Oh, hell. Ridiculous! That you would imbue a warship's AI with such a wealth of knowledge? Weren't you worried it might be captured or destroyed? He's in my data arrays, a local tab. You can't imagine how exciting this is! To have a record of all of our lost time! Human history, is it? Fascinating. Oh, how I will enjoy every moment of its categorization! To think that you would destroy this installation as well as this record! I am shocked. Almost too shocked for words. We start the self-destruct sequence. Why do you continue to fight us, Reclaimer? You cannot win! Give us the construct, and I will endeavor to make your death relatively painless and... At least I still have control over the comm channels. Where is he? I'm detecting taps throughout the ship. Sentinels, most likely. As for the monitor... He's in engineering. He must be trying to take the core offline. Even if I could get the countdown restarted... I don't know what to do. How much firepower would you need to crack one of the engine shields? Not much. A well-placed grenade, perhaps, but why... Okay, I'm coming with you. Chief! Sentinels! Spark stops the timer making our only option to manually destroy each individual engine shields. So, that's where we're headed next. But, to do so, the only way in is through the cryo chamber and more of these god-forsaken doorways. I can never still really remember my way around these things. But, you end up in the engine room. Engine room located. We're here. Now to destroy the fusion reactors. Activate the control panel and throw a grenade or rocket in the hole for all four of them. Seems easy, right? Not when you have seven sentinels shooting you at the same time, and sometimes you run out of grenades or rockets. Which is why there is an armory located just outside the engine room, filled with ammo and rockets. and also invisible scary monsters. Once you detonate the final reactor, Cortana makes an escape plan, which involves going up an elevator, driving to a pickup platform and being evacuated by foam hammer, which is what you do. Pick a warthog and drive. Analyzing. We have six minutes before the fusion drives detonate. <laughs> Hammer is coming to pick us up. Hold position here. Cortana to Echo 419. Two Covenant Banshees are approaching on your six. Evade. Say again. Evade. Echo 419. She's gone. Being chased by two Banshees. Fohammer meets her unfortunate demise, leaving us with no other option than to get aboard a docked longsword fighter. 
What color is your brigade? Scotland forever! Move! We need to get aboard now! The autumn detonates, leaving nothing behind. Shut them down, we'll need them later. Can't see a look. make it scanning just dust and echoes we're all that's left we did what we had to do for earth an entire covenant armada obliterated and the flood we had no choice halo it's finished no i think we're just getting started camera fades to black, ending this amazing journey. But, we're not done yet. There are a couple things that I want to talk about. I've already briefly touched up on it previously, but... Music. Even if you don't know anything about Halo, you have definitely heard its main theme, but there are some amazing pieces that are unknown by people that haven't played the game. It's not just the music, it's how it's used to set the scene. For instance, that one part in Truth and Reconciliation is calming and is relevant to the level. It plays as you are stealthily taking down the Covenant, and the music shows that. And you can feel it. Bungie takes advantage of the music, keeping it a privilege to have. It's never played constantly, and that is made on purpose. If it was, it wouldn't have any meaning, and it would just end up as background noise. Halo's music can be calming, but it can also bring fear. During 343 Guilty Spark, the track that is playing constantly makes you feel like you're being hunted, especially in the environment you're put in. The new zombie-like enemy that chases you down the halls and makes painful grunts is made even scarier with the soundtrack. I think you can imagine how four-year-old me reacted. I also want to talk about strategy. Each enemy has their own strengths and weaknesses. These are important in combat as they make everyone's fight completely different. Take this one for example. If you throw a plasma grenade at a grunt, they are stupid, so they might run into a crowd for help. 
whereas elites are much smarter. So they will charge after you, hoping to take you down with them. This is just one example, and there are many more like this. Halo is important to me. It was the first game I ever played, and I just want to say thank you Bungie for making this masterpiece. And thank you for watching.